Okay, there we go. I think I was uh, on mute. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, Scott Stevenson, the director of the Dallas Art Center. <clears throat> Excited to be here tonight uh, to talk to you about the projects that we've been doing. Just to recap, um, with Mr. Uh, Mr. Mays, Mayor Mays, uh, we got the opportunity to have a contract with the city to uh, create public art. And so what I'm going to do tonight is talk about uh, some of those activities um, to start with. Uh, we've continued the process with the all together to the Dallas mural um, that's based on the print that <clears throat> you actually have in your chamber there. Um, and most of you are familiar with uh, what's on Second Street. Uh, working with Don Hurt in the planning department, we've expanded that project to include a walking tour um, and a commemorative book. These, uh, these activities were funded by uh, joint grants written by the Dallas Art Center and uh, the planning department. Uh, Don Hurt got uh, SHPO grant funds. Uh, so what we've uh, come up with for that is a uh, walking tour. Um, I'm going to show you right now. Um, basically the signage and then um, i'll show you the actual app so what what happens uh you already have a historic landmark um buildings in town uh some of you are familiar there's a shield on those uh, most of these buildings were in the mural as well as there was uh, secondary lifts that were created and uh, so each of the buildings will actually have one of these placards. Uh, a resident or a visitor to the Dallas would be able to take their phone, come to one of these plaques that would be uh, visible on, on the building, put their phone up, and then download an app. So basically what we've created is an entire walking tour for uh, people of the Dallas um, to learn about the city, to learn about uh, the projects that, that we have put together, uh, the buildings particularly, and... Uh, if I, I, I might at the end, if we have time, just uh, show you the app so you can see that, um, see how it functions. Uh, but it's really a, a fantastic app. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you the book. Uh, we're quite excited about this book. Um, and basically what, uh, what we've been able to create uh, is, a, is a really wonderful, um, let me see if I can get this up here. Oh yeah, here we go. Is that right? No, sorry, a little little technical difficulty here. Here we go. Okay, so uh, what we did was uh, we worked with a local designer, and we created a book that commemorates all of the um, buildings. Um, so uh, this is a commemorative book. It will act as a fundraiser uh, for the uh, art center. Um, but basically it's an overview of the projects, the different partnerships that were created out of this. Um, and then the actual book, as you're seeing here, uh, is divided into periods. And so each of the periods um, represents the um, different assets that were featured in the mural. So these are just the, the mural um, assets, like the buildings, the cultural sites, all these different pieces. So we just finished this um, book. It's going to be coming out in April. Um, so we're quite excited about that. And again, that was uh, brought together with the funds uh, procured by Don and then also with the Arts Center. Uh, one of the things that is really our mission at the Art Center is to be a connecting hub to inspire and engage with art. And that's what we've really been striving to do is to work with the city, work with some of the other um, institutions in town, such as Main Street, uh, to put together these projects that really become an asset for the city, like that project there that I was just showing you. Uh, we're going to actually have something, and, and some of you may be aware I work on the cruise ships. I'm a pilot on those. Uh, and so I've been able to present this to their excursions uh, department. And so now we have something that we're offering people to come off of the boat. Right. So they can come off the boat. They can walk around town. It's something for people to look and do and uh, feel closer to the city. So um, that's kind of the, the, the conclusion of that project. We're also we've created a beer. We partnered with Freebridge Brewing to create a beer. We partnered with Kinos to create coffee. Um, and so it's really what we're trying to do is, is to really bring the Dallas together, get out of our silos and work together to see what we can do to really benefit the community. So uh, continuing on, uh, our next project is this uh, sculpture. Uh, it's going to be down on 2nd uh, and Washington. 
uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a video up for you. So um, what we've done is we've worked with a lo local artist to get a design for a sculpture. Um, this sculpture is going to be executed. It's going to be constructed by People's Forge Project. The video I'm going to show you right now is um, what's going to happen. So in, during Cherry Festival, we're going to have four forges. Okay, some of you aren't familiar. A forge is basically blacksmithing. So we're going to have people, citizens, 250 people are going to be making component parts of the sculpture that's going to be placed on the corner of 2nd Washington on property that's going to be donated by Discount Plus. And this is going to be a part of a pocket park, and I'll show you that shortly. So I'm just going to show you this video. It's very community based. This is basically what's going to happen uh, during Cherry Festival, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So, again, we're really trying to strive to get the community engaged and then uh, really try to bring as, as much of the arts out for people. So I'm just going to show you this. based around bringing uh, professional artists and the community together to build a community-based art piece. Uh, this art piece was designed by a local painter named Monica Helms. Um, she is a fantastic artist, and we worked with some designs that would translate. So just to interrupt briefly, so this was Winterfest. This was uh, two years ago. Um, so they worked with an artist that's a, a painting that they've transformed into uh, a metal piece. And then what you're seeing right here, these leaves, this is what people created. So people got to come, got to hit steel and make these little pieces that then went into that, uh, what is basically a sculpture. Well, from uh, 2D media into more of a 3D sculpture. So at this event, um, anyone and everyone welcome to come. So we've had kids as young as I think five here this weekend, um, forging leaves and flowers, uh, and some folks who are like well into their later years. It really brings the community together and it makes a bridge between the professionals and the folks that are just everyday art appreciators. We're providing all the equipment that you need and then pairing you with the folks that um, have the expertise to be able to bring you from start to finish in the project um, and be successful. Everyone who has participated walks away with this feeling of success and um, creativity to inspire them in their own lives to realize that the artist that we all have within us is achievable. Very empowering for folks to be able to show up, make a piece, see where it all fits into the grand scheme, and take ownership of this art project that will be displayed in their own community. Then they can walk up to it and say, "I made that piece. Um, my name is on this plaque. This is this is part of all of us. This isn't just one artist making a thing, but this is everyone coming together and really making something as a community." Okay. Well, okay. So the again, that's going to be happening uh, during Chair Festival. Uh, the person I was speaking there was Kellen Bateham, a uh, very talented blacksmith. Um, and so it's uh, as you can see there, it's very much community based. People are really going to have their hands in this. Um, and so this sculpture is leading towards uh, a pocket park that we're in the process of going through the planning department for approval. Um, and, and we're very excited about that. Um, we're going to be working with the community college uh, with their technical uh, program up there uh, with Robert Clark, who um, some of you may be familiar. They've got an incredible program up there. Um, so this project that we're working towards is going to be a very much heavily based in metal. Um, and it's a it's a design that was um, put together by an architect, a, a architect in the gorge. Um, and so it's going to be. Uh, really, really exciting uh, project that we're continuing to work with right there. Um, one thing, uh, one other thing is that we're continuing to work in, in other aspects. Um, so with Main Street, uh, one of the things that um, for me, having that experience of working on the cruise ships, when you come to the Dalles and you dock at that dock there, which, by the way, is a magnificent dock, um, the Dalles really did themselves a favor when you constructed that. That's one of the best docks that we go to. When you get off of the boat or when you're looking across the boat, you're looking at the freeway, right? It's not the best presentation. Um, and so 
I've, I've been meeting with the beautification committee uh, that Mayor Mays has put together, and then also with uh, the Dallas Main Street. And what we're looking to do is uh, see what we can create with the embankment there to do some uh, landscaping. The beautification committee has already worked with ODOT. Um, so what we're really trying to do is make the city as presentable as possible and then draw people in. Uh, one thing that uh, we're looking to do is to actually create a manned kiosk. So I'm just gonna show you right now um, what, I, what we're thinking about, what we're, what we're wanting to uh, put together. Um, again, sorry, I'm just, I need to find this file. Oops, is this it? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Escape. Okay. So right here, this is what we're looking to do. So um, what we would have here is a kiosk. We'd put some graphics on it. We'd be able to uh, have that manned. Uh, we have opportunities with the community college. They have a program uh, with Matt Fitzpatrick that uh, you you get college students that are looking for job experience. We have we've had three at the Dallas Art Center. Chamber has had one. Another business in town has had one. So what would happen is we'd have this man during the hours in which visitors are coming to the Dallas. Uh, we would have information about what people could see when they come into town. Uh, and then we could also have items for sale, right? Coffee, whatever local products that you'd want to have. Um, and so what we're really trying to do is to, is to bridge that gap, be, bring people in, and again, try to uh, be this kind of connecting hub. So um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna be pursuing some grant opportunities that will fund this. Um, and I think it was just gonna be a, a real asset to the city as we move forward. So um, one last thing I wanna share with you is the actual walking tour app. Um, and I'm going to um, I'm going to ask Azetta to see if she could just let me in with my phone, and I'll disconnect with uh, this right here, and then um, I'll, I'll be able to just kind of walk you through the app. Um, and it, and it, I think it's going to be really uh, an opportunity. It's really kind of for you to see uh, the the real opportunity here with this app. Okay, disconnecting. Okay. Recording in progress. Hmm. All right. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Is everyone able to see this? We see the uh, middle middle of the mural. Okay. Are you seeing this app that I opened up? <clears throat> No. No. Okay. Scott, you can bring that back to a future meeting if you're if you like. Um. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Are you seeing it now? Are we seeing it? Yes. Okay, great. So this is when I'm opening it up. It's on my phone. This is what you would see when you opened up this app. And so here we are all together the Dallas. You click on this. Here we are. Each of these pins right here represents a building uh, that's part of the tour. So if you go down to the bottom here, there's the Fort Dallas Museum. You click on that, you open that. There's the information right here. You have photos right here. And then here's how you get there. Okay, I'm in Portland right now. So that's what's happening right there. Uh, 
Fort and Dallas Museum is housed Dallas in one of the Museum, oldest buildings in the that goes along with The it. Carpenter Gothic structure so, is... There's a lot of opportunities within this. I think it's going to be really a great tool for the city um, as, as we kind of progress through uh, our maturation and, and what's starting to develop within, uh, within our community. So we're continuing to develop this further. We're working with the Mural Society of the Wall Dogs to add their murals. Um, that are going to be part of that and then working with any other community members. Um, funding for this was again brought to you by SHPO and then also there's uh, further support um, that, that's future coming. So anyway, those are those are kind of the projects that we've been working on and, and uh, appreciate your time and, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Scott. Anybody have any questions for Scott? Good work. Councilor Runyon just said good work. Oh, I thank agree. you. I love it. <laughs> Counts for long. Okay, Scott, right. thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, okay. looking forward to it. Look, look for the coffee, the beer, the book, the walking tour. Come hit some steel. You'll enjoy it. It's good for you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, cheers. Okay, item 5B on the agenda is uh, Scott Baker with the Northern Wasco County Parks and Recreation uh, District, and he will give us an update on Sorosis Park. Thank you so much for having me and providing me an opportunity to update you because we have a lot of exciting things going on up at Cirrhosis Park. Um, you know, after the devastation of losing over 780 ponderosa pines to the pine bark beetle, um, we ground the stumps, made it, uh, had to get some water down to keep the dust down, and then really try to take this as an opportunity to reimagine what cirrhosis could be for all the members of our community. We engaged a firm to do public outreach and to develop a um, conceptual plan based on what we heard. And we did that a couple of different ways. We did stakeholder interviews with people who care about the park and have um, ties to the park either through, through their groups, um, like the softball association, the pickleball club, the disc golfers, and then just general users. We had some community outreach events at the farmer's markets, and we set up at a couple of grocery stores. And then we also did an online survey. And all of these outreach we did um, both in English and Spanish. And we really made an uh, effort to reach out to our Spanish speaking members of our community and go to them rather than having them ha uh, have to come to the farmer's market. Us, we went out um, to like a much market and um, some uh, Spanish speaking groups at the high school to really get their input as well on what we wanted to see um, and what would make cirrhosis inviting for all the residents and you know cirrhosis draws from golden dale to Maupin. people come and enjoy cirrhosis it's really a regional park and so after a, that kind of robust public outreach we took everything that we heard we distilled it down and that's what's kind of created the plan that's in front of you and it's an ambitious plan and it's going to be done in phases but i'm so uh, pleased to be able to share that for our first phase, which overwhelmingly everybody said we want trees replanted and we want a working irrigation system because even before the trees came out, the irrigation system there was in sad shape. And although we had been chipping away at it slowly over the last couple of years, it was a huge project. Um, and that was everybody said, just make the park green edge to edge, get, let the grass grow, plant the trees um, so that future generations will have a park that look like what it once did because cirrhosis today is not the same park it was a few years ago. And so, but, but what's exciting is, is that that first phase we're gonna spend, we're set to spend a million dollars at cirrhosis park this summer. And that is a combination of help with the city through sharing the um, federal dollars, the county and the park district um, to bring us to that $1 million um, first phase. And that's going to, build us a state-of-the-art irrigation system that will use less water than the previous system, um, plant, um, replant some trees, create a more forested feel in one part of the park and more desert feel in another part of the park. So as you walk around cirrhosis, you're almost walking around the state where you have in the northwest corner kind of more wet water areas and kind of more representative of the plants that would grow in the north and coastal ranges. And then as you walk around the park, it will be more representative of grows on the eastern side of the state. And um, so we're kind of concentrating our water use in, in one sort of densely shaded areas. Of course, the trail will be expanded. We're going to we're striving to make it a full mile. Right now it's 0.8 miles, and it would be nice to have it undulate a little bit more and be just a solid mile. And um, 
and then really lay the groundwork and do some infrastructure things to grow out the future phases. That said, we just didn't want to make people wait for those future things that the park desperately needs, which is a new playground, sports courts, gazebos, areas for large events. Those were all at the top of the list that people wanted to see in the park. And we're going to go after grant funding for those. And right now I'm actually working on a grant application that's due the first through the local government grant program that will fund the gazebo and a covered sport court that would include basketball and some pickleball courts. Um, and that's a $660,000 project. Community members have already stepped up and donated $165,000 towards that project as a match. So I think that just speaks to how much the community loves Sorosis Park and is excited about the future of the park. So that's where we're at. We've got um, the topographic map and the irrigation is under design right now. It will go out to bid uh, mid-April. We're hoping to have all of this work done by the fall. Meanwhile, on a separate track, we've got a grant applications going in to fund those big ticket items, the gazebo, the pickleball court. We're working with a private developer to work, talk about um, redoing Treetop Park. That's also going on another track. And so um, here in a couple of years, I mean, I think we're going to have a really beautiful park. It's going to take a long time for those trees to grow. But we're not buying baby trees. We're buying, you know, six, eight foot tall, two, two and a half inch caliber trees that will transplant well and really take off. Um, all of this is available on our website, the plan that you see in front of you, as well as the background document, the concept plan. It's 94 pages long, a lot for your packet, but it is available on the web, on our website. And it talks, it kind of details that community outreach, it details um, some of these uh, big ticket items in more detail and how we came about them. And um, it also includes cost estimating, which was a big part of this project, which allows us to phase it. So we know what things are gonna cost. Um, I had a couple bound copies that I shared uh, with council. Um, again, uh, the, the city has a few copies of that and we can get them more. Again, it is on our website and it's really easy to look at it um, digitally. And so um, for any of the audience members uh, participating via Zoom, our website is uh, www.nwprd.org. And I can direct you there. Um, it also gives you an opportunity, if you're so moved, to donate to this project right there on our website, and it is tax deductible. So I want to leave plenty of room for questions. Any questions for Mr. Baker? I have one. Uh, Scott, maybe I saw that in here before, but um, I seem like I read something about tying into the 14th Street Reservoir. Is that still something that, or am I mistaken? There's currently a path that goes up from Washington Street up the hill, and you can get to Sorosis Park that way. Um, but the 14th Street Reservoir is a project that's in our master plan, so maybe that's how they're tied. But this this master plan that's in front of you now is site specific to just Sorosis. That's that's the future. We had a lot of irons in the fire. Thanks. Any any other questions? I have a uh, the 165 thousand dollar grant or uh, match. Yes. Um, what was that match for exactly? Was so it was, it was um, earmarked specifically for the gazebo. Right, that's what I thought. Good. And so that would be get us pretty close to just purchasing the, doing that gazebo project outright. But we want to get the most bang for our bucks. So I want to use that money as a match for a local government grant program and build that basketball court um, with the uh, state funds. We can do that. Great. We get, you know, two for one. That. Uh, basketball court will also be covered and could be um, event space, you know, so if you had something that outgrew the gazebo, you wanted to spill over into the covered area of the basketball court, it's close by. Um, and so one of the things that people do at Cirrhosis commonly is have weddings. So this will make it a really nice spot to have a wedding. You can even uh, do your reception in the picnic area. And so give people a nice low cost way to um, get hitched. The gazebo, as you call it, is that the same as item K, the pavilion? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's an octagonal 40 foot diameter mm -hmm. um, raised gazebo with a little uh, bump out for a, that could serve as a band stage area. So, right. And we can have live music and square dances and things like that in it. Okay. And if you needed more space, you could spill out into the grassy area. And that's actually the first area that we uh, rejuvenated after the trees came out. Wanted to give people as they drove into the park a little bit hope 
of what the park will look like. And so it's ringed with hawthorns. We put some bark chips down and we redid the grass in that it's right behind the fountain, which this week has been started running because we got the water on. And so the fountain's going right now. And the funding uh, city and county, uh, is the county's all uh, definite and, and secured and everything? Yeah, we don't have the uh, final agreement signed like we do with the city, but um, they, uh, they approved it um, in their uh, commissioner meeting. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just for staff to work out the details and um, get an agreement on paper. And I've been working with uh, the administration over there and things are going smoothly. Great. Mr. Council Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Scott. This is really exciting. Uh, it's been a little heartbreaking to see the uh, the fall and of our of our park in some ways. So this is sort of the rising again, I guess. I uh, uh, know that many in the community have high hopes for that. Just a couple of quick little questions, mostly just for curiosity's sake, based on your plan here. What are the shelters? I noticed there are a, num uh, a number of little shelters around the park. Yeah, and so we have the large lion shelter that is rented out all summer long, and it's super popular place for people to just want to have a small gatherings, kid birthday parties. With the loss of the trees, um, you know, we need shade, and it's going to take those trees time to grow. So we're going to provide shade by having small, you know, 12 foot by 12 foot shelters, most of them first come, first serve, a few of them reservable. And so it just provide a place out of the sun where you can sit under on a picnic table and have a birthday party, talk with your friends. Nice. Thank you. And I see here is something called the camp host site. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah. And so this was, um, you know, so security is, was one of the issues that came up. People were at night not feeling that the park was being well taken care of. We also um, had a concern, um, not a concern so much, it's just that we anticipated is the dorm that the CGCC fills out, that cirrhosis kind of becomes the backyard for that dormitory. And so we talked with the college about having a shared security office um, with housing on site and so that they could do um, both security for the community college and the park at the same time. Hmm. So you know, it would be a desire to have, um, you know, what that looks like, we've talked about just a pad where, you know, a nice retired couple could park their fifth wheel in exchange for some camp host duties, but it would be similar setup to whether it's a stick built or, or a travel trailer, to what you have in most state parks that you go to, where there's a camp host that, you know, provides some security, a presence at the park. Um, I don't think they'll be selling firewood and ice, but, you know, maybe. Thank you. And w one last one, if I may, a um, bit of a tangent. and. That's all right. I know you can handle it. Uh, I, obviously, this is a priority project, but could we maybe have a conversation or an update sometime uh, over the summer on where you are with the Mill Creek Trail? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Probably like to have, get an update on this too. Yes. Yeah. And we, we have some other, we got lots of exciting news. Council Runyon. Um, Having been up there recently and whatnot, and um, granddaughter in the playground stage, a couple of them. The uh, the uh, playground area, which was built by citizens with donations many years ago, is in need of some refurbishing and updating and whatnot. Is that part of this project, or will that be done as a separate issue? Uh, that will be a, a separate phase. I'm thinking, you know, you can think of it as like 1.2 or 2.1. Uh, we haven't named them yet, but um, we had the manufacturer of that playground come out and do an inspection. Okay. And it has about two or three years of life left. What you don't see is those wooden piers underground deteriorate over time. And Hood River had a Leathers and Associates playground come out that was put in about the same time as Treetop. Um, these aging structures, folks just aren't making them out of wood anymore. What we hope to do is to um, create a plan to replace that structure. Uh, repurpose the wood, um, take those turrets and the drag and slide and all of those things and make kind of like a fairy shelter um, tucked up maybe into the oak trees or something that would be kind of a, like a fun playhouse type thing. Um, or take the, all of those routed out woods that have all the names of the families on them and use them as siding on one of the shelters that are nearby. But we want to be able to keep that history as part of the park and repurpose some of that wood. Um, personally, I think it would be a great 
project for that new building trades program they have over at CGCC. Uh, demoing that and rebuilding it into a shelter would be um, kind of a dream of mine if we could pull that off. But, um, you know, the basketball court and gazebo and, and treetop park, they were all really neck and neck. When uh, citizens stepped up and donated that money for the gazebo, funding has a way of just rising things right up to the top of the list, you know? Sure. And so, um, you know, these are going to be great amenities. We do have two or three years of life left in treetop, so we have some time to figure it out. But we want to um, we want to create a play structure that is fun for everybody, people of all abilities, of all sensory. Um, just have a, a really great um, state of the art playground, keeping a similar footprint, bring it a little bit forward. It'd be really important to somehow save the the names of those that donated. A few are in this room tonight, and probably listening as well. That. That was a very important, uh, you know, a build, a very important build for the community when that was done. So yeah, there's, there's no chance we won't keep all of those things and incorporate them in some way. And in fact, um, the little handprints of the kids that were, those people are old enough now, 20 plus years later to help build the new one. And so um, I think that that would be a really great uh, way to come around circle. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Scott. We'll uh, look forward to another update maybe in a couple months. All right. Months. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Item six on the agenda is audience participation. During this portion of the meeting, anyone may speak on any subject which does not later appear on the agenda. Up to five minutes per person will be allowed. If a response by the city is requested, the speaker will be referred to the city manager for further action. The issue may appear on a future meeting agenda for a city council consideration. Citizens are encouraged to ask questions with the understanding that the city can either answer the question tonight or refer the question to the appropriate city staff who will get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. If you're on Zoom and you'd like to address the council, please, uh, you can raise your hand. We do have some people in the audience who may want to speak. So. I'll uh, ask if there's anybody who would like to address the council for up to five minutes. Yes, sir. Where do you want them to sit? You want them at this table? This one? You want them at this table? Okay. Yeah, come on, uh, take a seat here. Uh, please give us your name and address for the record. In the big chair, huh? Okay, my name is uh, Robert Schultons, uh, 2637 East 10th Street, the Dells. And uh, we're, uh, my, my questions are on the um, um, center that you're trying to put behind the dealership. And uh, just uh, questions as to you know, why we were not contacted ahead of time as to property owners. Uh, out there, I realized that uh, you changed some rules, and uh, in the process, you're you only had to put it in the paper, which has a three thousand, um, uh, you know, readership, if if it's a total readership, okay, out of sixteen thousand. Uh, that to me uh, looks a little devious, okay. Um, and then to bring a, a project of a major project that you're talking about doing and not asking for community input. Uh, community input's coming now after you've changed some rules and I just uh, have a little problem with that. And uh, I, uh, I, I just want some information. Uh, you know, we bought property there years ago. Okay? Uh, we bought property after I bought the dealership to the, back, to the next street with the idea that we were gonna do some expansion down the road. And uh, that's still in our plans. And um, now all of a sudden we're finding out that the property is getting next to us is being totally used differently than when I bought the property. And I, you know, I understand changes, okay? And uh, um, I'm, not, I'm not against the project. I just think it's in a very bad spot, okay? Uh, and I think uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that I don't think people are looking at. Um, you know, we've had some meetings with uh, McKed, 
And uh, when we talked to them, uh, you know, they've told us things that didn't pop up in, in the plan. You know, I mean, you guys are telling us it's for a shelter. It's supposed to be shelter housing. Okay. Well, we're finding out there's quite a few buildings that are being built there that people aren't going to be living in exactly. Uh, we're also finding out that there's some plans possibly down the road for low income housing. Uh, and I don't, I guess what I'm concerned about is you have a lot of people making decisions. I don't think you're getting all the, all the information. Or if you are, then you're keeping it to yourself, I guess. Um, so I have some questions about that type of thing. Um, you know, the other thing I'm worried about, we've asked questions about uh, how are we going to police this area? Uh, I hate to tell you this, but, you know, birds of a feather do flock together, okay? And we've seen that in the past. We, in the last two years, we've had 52 uh, break-ins to our, to our property. Uh, people's cars, maybe some of you have been, you know, that have had, had your cars hit, I don't know. But the thing is, we've turned this into the police. Uh, we've only had one that we've uh, followed up on as a police department. So I, we asked people at an uh, earlier meeting, how we should go about this. I think, Julie, I think my daughter talked to you and it sounded like you were saying, well, pretty much uh, we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing. You didn't say that? Okay. Well, you didn't give us a plan. Let's put it that I way. I did actually. Did when you? I spoke with Jennifer, I told her I had some ideas after she explained everything to me in the okay. entire region and that I would work with the police chief and I've already had a conversation with him and he's already working on ideas. Uh, that's good. I see that type of information I'm not hearing. Okay. And uh, you know, we've had, we had break-ins and we're not the only person out there that has break-ins. Right, okay. Was, I mean, coastals had break-ins, had their fences cut. Uh, and this has all increased in the last two years. And it's, it's through a, a mobile group of, of people that are moving through there. Okay. Um, and it's just, it, it's becoming a problem. And uh, uh, like I said, as a property owner, uh, this is a concern. Uh, and I think it should, you know, and I, the other thing is, you know, we we're just listening to this uh, gentleman talk to us a minute ago and he says, hey, we need to do some landscaping on where the uh, ships are coming in, right? Uh, to make it look better, okay? Well, to me, okay, West 6 is the busiest street in the Dallas. And when you come out to West Six, okay, we have three motels out there, and we've got two, three car, three car, uh, car dealerships there that have people coming in and having cars work on all the time, uh, and they're from all over. I mean, most of our citizens, to be honest, are people that we have buy cars, come from outside the area. Okay, so it's you know this is how they look at the Dallas. Uh, we're in the process right now of hiring a, uh, a manager. And uh, that was his comment. He says, he says, we look at the Dells and we drive into the place. He says, it looks okay, but it doesn't look great. Mr. Shaw, uh, and that's about, how it sits now. You got, you got about 30 seconds. That's okay. fine. Okay. You, I understand. Okay. Uh, but the thing being is you have to look at what you're doing to the city. Okay. And I think that needs to be looked at. So, and uh, I appreciate uh, Mr. Mayor, the opportunity to talk, okay? And I understand that I don't have so much time. So thank, thank you, you very much for listening, and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to? Yes, ma'am. Sir, go ahead. Please give us your name and address. Uh, my name is Shelly Onslinger, um, and 26, 27 East 10th Street. And I also would like to just, I have some questions also about the Navigation Center and um, and I'm opposed to the location change. And so some of my questions are, um, try to get it in five minutes. First one is uh, why, I don't understand why we're moving it, first of all, um, because I've read articles in the paper that it's very successful where it is, um, that you haven't had any problems with it. And then based upon the site plan, they're not increasing the pallet, the homes. So I don't understand why we need to move it. Um, also, it feels like the property now that, that you, it's being proposed for is property that could be used commercially to bring revenue in. Um, and I hear of the projects that we're trying to do in town, you know, that we're trying, that's gonna cost money from taxpayers and citizens here. So it doesn't really make sense to me why we would then 
move something from where it's working right now to a place that it's going to cost money to develop and that is then not going to be able to bring in any revenue for us. Um, I also, I just have some concerns about, I, I have, I've looked over this um, on the MACAC website and um, I, I see what the plan is, but then I'm I, I, like, like my dad just said, then I'm hearing different things. Like I was at the county commission meeting two weeks ago, and apparently the plan is to put um, beds in there for veterans. Awesome. I think that's great to take. But again, that's not on the plan. Um, so I, I have a hard time earmarking money when, when I, it doesn't seem like the full plan is out there for us. I know that like, personally, if I was, if I'm building a house in the Dallas, I have to submit a final plan. Um, and that's spending my own money. So I think as a community, as a city, if we are contributing, as it says on here, $500,000, I don't understand how that is already approved and given if we don't know exactly what's happening there. It seems like a poor use of funds, to be honest. I, and, and again, I agree. I don't think the navigation center is a bad thing. I just don't feel like it's fully thought out. And it feels like because property was donated that it's like, oh, let's put it there without thought of what's, what's happening around this, up around this place. Um, another point that was made on the fact sheet was that it's close to services. And I, I would like some clarification on that because the services, I don't understand how car dealerships, storage units, hotels, um, a farm supply store are services that are gonna be helpful to, to houseless people or people that are needing these things. So the, those are concerns that I think we just really, I would really love you guys to look at and before we, we donate the money to them as a city. Like, as I said, as a, as a taxpayer in the city, it just, it seems like, um, it seems like things are being rushed and we're trying to get this done very quickly. And I, I, that's very concerning to me as a city or as a, as a citizen in this, in this town. That's all, is that my time? You got two minutes. I got two minutes. Ooh, I talked fast. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my those are my main concerns. Can can you guys tell me like based upon again based upon the fact sheet, is this five hundred thousand already guaranteed, or are there contingencies upon this? Would you like me to answer? Go ahead, Julie. Thank you. The five hundred thousand dollars is committed but not given yet, and they are. American Recovery Plan Act funds from the federal government. They're not city tax dollars. Okay. Yeah. So what happened that and also the Parks and Recreation District, you just heard about $400,000. Mm -hmm. Those funds came to us from the federal government. There were specific things we could and couldn't use them for. And so we had the council look at the proposed list that staff developed on various projects that were needing funding. And those two projects, because they're a large amount of money, the council said, yes, but we want it to come back to us. And that was one of the reasons why Mr. Baker was here tonight to kind of give that update before the funding requests come back for final approval by the council. So this funding hasn't been approved then fully yet. Funding approval for that project is not approval of the project. I want to make okay. sure that okay. everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. There's a very long process that it will go through and it will start with the planning department with site plan review. Then it will probably go to the planning commission. You know, there will be ample opportunities, I would think, for input. Okay. And once it, it's an actual application, all the details will have to be provided and then there will be opportunity for you to comment on it. Okay. So it, the reason you don't have all the facts is because they haven't presented it to the city yet. Okay. Because it's not a city project. No, it's not it's a, a city confusing, project. It's a little confusing, I think. Yeah, and that, and I think that is, but and I know that it's not. It's it's a MCAC project, but they're they're coming to the city and the county to get funding. Mm -hmm. So that's where, as that's you know, as a, again, as a citizen, you you guys represent us, and that's where I would like you guys to be asking these questions, so that when so that we can know. Um, and then you know, like so, how 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 is this project? I guess we have these we have these facilities already in town, right? We have the pallet shelter, we have buildings for macaque, we have all these things. So it seems to again, it seems to me like the project is basically an office building and then moving pallets again from where they are already. Where again, it's it seems successful. Like 
the, the articles that I've read about the success of it are great, but I, so I guess I don't understand why we're going to reinvent it. And again, try to find a place that will cost money to develop to bring when we already have something there that's working. No navigation center is being, is being moved. It's, there is no navigation center right now. Right. So, but yeah. the, but based upon the things that are said that are going to be in the navigation center, we have those things in town right. in different buildings. So, I mean, I guess, I guess I, again, I guess that's where I'm confused because it comes back to like, oh, it's a navigation center. Oh, but also it's going to be this. Oh, but it's also going to be that. And so again, it's, it's hard to, to get behind being really supportive of it and wanting to really encourage spending funds from the city and the county when we don't know exactly what the plan is, because it feels like there needs to be a very specific plan for it to go on. Have you uh, talked to Mr. LaPointe? You know, you know, I have not had a chance to you talk really to him. Um, I think he could answer a lot of your questions a lot better than we can. And also we have a planning staff that will uh, be processing the, the application. That's yeah. excellent. And, and then I had, I had for the planning, um, the planning staff too, I, is that does, so do we get to see that as community members as it's going through the process or is that, or do we not like when it gets proposed to the, to the, when, you know, cause you said the nothing is approved, like, do we get to see it or is it basically like it gets approved by the planning department and then it's like, oh, we want to let you guys know about this. I may ask a question of our senior planner who's in the audience. Is it, isn't it that the property owners within 300 feet are notified of a proposed application before it can be approved, which gives you an opportunity to comment and gives you standing. Okay. So that's before it's approved. And then is that 300 feet from the perimeter of, cause this is a large piece of land. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't want to right. say the wrong. And, and just because you're not within 300 feet doesn't mean you cannot get standing. Right. Right. Yeah, of so. course. Mm -hmm. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We clarify one thing again. Uh, I'm not, I was never in favor of that location either, but the location they did want got sold. Okay. And this donation came up. It's not a city project. We haven't voted on that at all. All we've discussed are the, the uh, funds from the federal government, which are our tax dollars too, coming back here and a list of projects that were eligible based on the criteria of those funds. But it's not a city project. It's like any home or a resident or agency business that applies to the planning department under the rules of the planning department. And we, as far as I know, have no say over that. If they meet the rules, they, they can build what they build, whether you know, again, I'm not in favor necessarily of that. I have relatives right there on that street. And we've gone through a process and met with uh, the director. And I would suggest really, he's, he's really willing to sit down and talk with you. I would, I would go that direction. Uh, but it's not a city project. Yeah, and that's, and I understand that. But again, like I'm saying, well, like, I know okay. you guys are, are going to be giving funds to it. Um, so that's where that's where I, I think essentially it then does kind of become a little bit of a city project because you are giving money to it. Only because those funds have a certain criteria that right. they can only go certain places. So uh, anyway, and Julie can help you with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Offline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the city council for up to five minutes? Yes, ma'am. Please give us your name and address. My name is Jennifer Dewey and my address is 383 Summit Ridge. And I have talked to Kenny LaPointe. Um, and I will tell you that it is ambiguous on some of the plans. He, what he informed me was that he is going to have the building and he showed me the site map, just like everybody else has put in the paper and everything else, site map. And their 18 pallet shelters are going to be moved over. There's going to be a, um, a, community gathering, like for a, not a community gathering, but like a, for those residents. And there will be, um, he said, bathroom facilities that are accessible. What it does not say in there is that he is leaving the back acre and a half empty and not developing that. And he said down the road, who knows, maybe something, let me quote him, is that maybe down the road, we could do something like low income housing in that back. So that to me is not a temporary 
um, housing situation? And if it is, what constitutes temporary? Is temporary three months, two months, or two years? I would like to know out of the, I've heard 80, is there 80 people in the shelter uh, pallets right now? 36. 36, okay. How many, how long have they been in that facility? They rotate in and out. So I built the warming shelter um, mm -hmm. two years ago in November, and it was a warming shelter, which is different than what it is now. Now it's transitional. Shelter. Right, but this the warming shelter is not the pallet homes. It was, but now it's not. Now to be in a pallet home, you have to have a transition plan and you have to work your plan to prove that you are trying to get out of homelessness. And they have a lot of rules and regulations in order to stay there. Yeah, but how long have they been? How long have the residents that are in there been in there now? I couldn't say because people mm -hmm. come in and out, right? So people succeed in their plan and get into an apartment or maybe people break the rules and have mm -hmm. to leave, um, but it just varies. I mean, <sighs> it's always changing. Okay, my, my concern with this is I'm down there every day down at the dealership and I am the one who deals with the theft and the crime. And I was shocked to know that we'd called them out 52 times. I asked for a police report for the last two years of how many times we've called the police. And that's just my location. So if I'm doing 52 times, I guarantee you everybody around me is way more than what we're doing because we did not start until recently calling on things. And so I, I mean, some things we just let slide and go and take care of it and move on. But I do not feel like, so now I'm having to invest in extra security cameras and security. I had to hire a security person for the tune of $5,000 for two weeks. So, and I still had a catalytic converter stolen at that time. So these are the problems that need to be addressed. And I did talk to Julie and my dad, he was a little bit confused, but Julie did, I did talk to her. She called me back and, and was surprised to hear of all the problems we've been having in there, which to me, that was surprising that she hadn't heard of all those problems. And she, but she did say she would get with Tom and they would work some, they would get their heads together and come up with some ideas. And that's the last time I'd heard about it. I would like to invite you all um, there is a group of, because, you know, the last council meeting that I was on, Rich, you had told me that um, we need to come down, I need to come down and um, talk to Julie about that at a more appropriate time to go over the theft and vandalism, which I honestly thought that this was the appropriate time because I had council members here, everybody here. So what, um, there is a group of business members that are going to be meeting on Thursday, the 31st, and I would invite you to come down and the whole purpose of it is to put our heads together on the problems that we're having so that we can work with city council to come up with a game plan to resolve and kind of attack some of those problems. And I think it's, it's more of an informational and so we can come up with some kind of solution. So I would invite you guys to all come down. It will be on the 31st at the old Griffith building at five o'clock or I think 530. Um, I'm sorry, across from True Value. Yeah. So yeah, Ace. Sorry, <laughs> but um, I I, do, I am I'm opposed to having the navigation center back there. I deal with a lot. There's a lot of thoroughfare, and I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize until the other day when somebody else was complaining about it what it was. But I've watched things from people pooping, literally pulling their pants down and pooping on the property, and keep going. I had car. I've had to have cars removed from parking out there and just camping out there and throwing garbage out there. I've had them go into our dumpsters. And the reason I know that there's a fence, it's all blocked up. There is a fence and they're pulling it out of the dumpster, sleeping on it. And then keep, and I don't know what else there is, but I know it's ours because there's packing slips on there. And so it's got our, our information on there um, to where it was addressed to us and it's cardboard boxes that they're doing. So this is a problem that if there's an acre and a half, when I talked to Kenny LaPointe, his answer to the security was there'll be somebody on there all the time. There'll be a staff member 24 hours a day and he has an office in the back corner. Well, then in the next breath, it was an acre and a half that's going to be vacant in there. And there's a fence. How is he gonna see any of that? There's no way with the acre and a half and a fence. So I, this is a problem and I don't think it's thought out from the existing people that are around there. And I think that I, I am, a, I'm discouraged in the fact that it was not brought, that the rules were changed so that they could be in there. 
and it was not brought up to the public. And there was a planning meeting where they presented it. And I, I got online and then I was told it was not a public planning meeting. You have about and, 30 seconds. And so I was not allowed, I didn't get any information on that. Hmm. So to me, that makes me think that there's going to be things that come, and that was a month ago. So it should be known by now, but that seems like it, it was stuff that happened in the background that I don't know about. And I think the community should be aware of all of this. Mr. Shulton has used the word devious and you're implying much the same. I personally resent that. There was nothing devious about what was going on. The planning department has acted above board. Well, okay, but I have, when I talk devious. to you, when I talk to you, that Rich, the word you used. Rich, when I talk to you, if you're going to do a major project, that's already been explained, sir. The sir, you're out of order, and that's already been explained. And I'm not going to sit here and take being called devious and not let it go unanswered. You also made the accusation at a county board meeting that you never had, nobody was allowed to speak at the last meeting, and that's not true either. Did so, you start the conversation that we will not talk about the navigation center. Mm -hmm. and your daughter, to leave it open. your daughter spoke as well. Everybody that wanted to speak spoke. Yeah, that is that is totally not true. That is absolutely no. true. It's in the minutes, sir. I've had enough of this, and I'd ask you to be quiet now. You're out of order, and everything you're saying is not true anyway. Okay, so go. Oh, I'll see you after the meeting if you want to talk further. Okay. Go ahead. You have. You, I'll give you another thirty seconds. Okay. I, you know, when you say that, that is absolutely not true. I went to your house. And I asked you to speak because this was all closed, and so I went to you and asked you if I could speak with you. And if you didn't want to speak there, I was more than willing to come downtown to ask you. Yeah. So we had a discussion. But the very first thing you said to me was, "I've been waiting for you to come by," and that we could we could talk. And I've been waiting for you to come by and. I asked you, would you like it in the back of your house? And you said, no, I wouldn't have it in the back of my house too. So what's good for me is not good for you. And that's the problem I have. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else would like to speak to the city council for up to five minutes? Uh, Judy Merrill, you have to unmute yourself, Judy. Oh, sorry, she'll unmute, unmute you. It's the red thing still on. Okay, now now unmute yourself, Judy. Ryan, there. There you go. Yay! Thank you so much, um, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, my name is Judy Merrill, and I live at 400 West 11th Street in the Dalles. I would personally like to take a moment to thank the city's very Is that dedicated. Turn that up a bit. Oh. Um. Go ahead, Judy. He was asking if he could uh, turn up the volume, if you have that. If not, please proceed. I should turn up my volume? There you go. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I would um, personally like to take a moment to thank the city's very dedicated maintenance team, Jerry and Terry, for the excellent job they have done in building the first public restroom on the west side of the Veterans Building downtown. In addition, they've provided new signage on 2nd Street, the parking lot next to the building, and on the building itself, along with brighter lighting outside the building. The timing, I, don't, I think, could not be more perfect. The Board of St. Vincent's DePaul Ministry Building has had the four porta potties removed from the property of St. Vincent's de Paul. In addition, there has been a noticeable increase of feces on the near buildings. The new public restroom is a step forward for the city providing public restrooms in our downtown corridor. Again, I want to share my deep appreciation to the maintenance team, Jerry and Terry, for their work they did in designing and building our first public restroom in our downtown corridor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Last call. Okay, we'll move on. 
Item seven is city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor Mays. Just a couple of quick items I wanted to say, welcome back. This is our first in-person meeting for just over two years. You may notice some changes in the council chamber while we were closed for in-person meetings. Our city clerk, Isetta Grossman, with some help from the finance director, Angie Wilson, redesigned this and did all the contracts, get all of the new technology, the new blinds, the new paint, carpet, clear down to your new nameplates. I think it looks beautiful and professional, and I just want to say thank you for all that hard work. And secondly, uh, Public Works Director Dave Anderson let me know today that the contract is out to bid for the Dog River replacement and the bid opening will be May 5th. So we're moving right along on that project as well. That concludes my report. Thank you, Julie. Welcome. City Council reports. We'll start uh, with Council Runyon. Uh, the only thing I have on there is the uh, True Life Regional Internet Network of which uh, lost signal about... Uh, 20 minutes into it. <laughs> so I'll let the uh, councilor uh, Randall, who probably was there for the whole meeting, talk about that. And that's really the only thing I have because I was uh, on vacation seeing my granddaughter in California. That's important. Absolutely. Councilor uh, Richardson. Nothing to report tonight, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Randall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On March 16th, I attended the uh, meet and greet for the potential uh, city managers of uh, the city manager candidates at the civic auditorium. Oh, and then on March 17th, uh, conducted the interviews with the city council and the, um, the four candidates. And we made a selection on that day on March 21st, the Q life meeting as council Runyon referred to, uh, met and, um, they are seeking a volunteer to serve on the budget committee. So if anyone knows of anyone who would like to do that, um, historic landmarks commission met, or actually, excuse me, the Historic Landmarks Commission meeting scheduled for the March 23rd was canceled and they will meet next on the uh, 30th of March. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilor Long. Yes, so um, like Council Randall and actually all other councilors, we had 100% participation in the city process. I forgot that one. No, it feels a long time <laughs> ago, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, so yes, so as most of you probably know, but just in case you don't, um, Matthew Cleves was selected as our new city manager and he'll be starting in May, May 15th. Um, on March 15th, I attended the urban renewal meeting and we welcomed a new member, Shannon Saldivar from Saldivar Insurance downtown. And our main discussion that night was regarding um, the incentive programs that we have for um, downtown development. And those were just discussed. So you can go back and listen to the meeting minutes um, if you'd like. And we'll be voting on those at our next meeting. So if you have any feedback, be sure to get it to, um, to the board, uh, to the agency before that meeting. And our next meeting is actually going to be April 19th. And then traffic safety, um, two of the key takeaways for me, and there were a lot of things discussed, but um, we really need to slow traffic down up on Columbia View Heights, um, basically from Auction Yard Hill going up the hill toward the um, veterans home. And so that was discussed quite a bit. Um, we're looking at some new signage, but in the meantime, we're asking people to slow down and remember that even though they might be on their way through, this is actually a residential neighborhood um, not a thoroughfare street. And so just keep that in mind if you're driving up there. And then uh, the other thing is we want to start some education. And, um, and so I just want to give the public a heads up that a lot of people have started parking with um, two of their tires up on the sidewalk and only the other two on the street. And that is actually illegal in city code. And so we were asking people not to do that. It's hard on um, the curbs and sidewalks. So just need to park on the street. And I understand why you do it. It's some of our narrow streets. Nobody wants to get their car dinged, but if you've got trucks with big mirrors, maybe bend them in. And that's my report. Thank you, Counselor. As far as my report goes on May, March 15th, I had three different uh, meetings uh, while I was interviewed on KODL by Al Wynn. I attended a meeting with some board members from St. Vincent de Paul. And I also attended a meeting with the board of the Columbia Gorge Community College that evening. On March 16th, the following day, I had a Zoom meeting with Senator Jeff Merkley and other community leaders. 
On March 21st, I attended a meeting with some library board members. And on the 22nd, I was interviewed by Jeff, or, um, Mark Bailey at KACI. And that concludes my report. Item nine is the consent agenda. Items of a routine and non-controversial nature are placed on the council agenda to allow the city council to spend its time and energy on the more important items and issues. Any councilor may request an item be pulled from the consent agenda and be considered separately. Items pulled from the consent agenda will be placed on the agenda at the end of the action items section. Tonight, we only have one item on the consent agenda and it is the approval of the March 14th city council meeting minutes. Is there any uh, anybody like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, I'll move to uh, move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved by Councilor Randall and seconded by Councilor Richardson to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A is a resolution authorizing the transfers of budgeted amounts for the 2021-22 budget. Our finance director, Ms. Angie Wilson. Good evening, honorable mayor, members of council. Um, you have before you my um, agenda staff report 22-009. Um, this is authorizing transfers of budget amounts between categories of the various funds of the city of the Dallas adopted budget and making appropriations and authorizing expenditures for the fiscal year of 2022. Um, this evening, I just wanna remind you that this is a, um, a budget adjustment. This is not a supplemental budget. So the budget amendments move already budgeted funds between categories of the same fund without adding to the funds total budget. Um, resolution 22-009 transfers $111,500 from the contingency line item of the general fund to cover the following items. 90,000 is needed um, to compensate the police department. Um, due to several police officers resigning, the police department is significantly understaffed and is requesting an additional 80,000 in the overtime budget for of the personnel services. And then 10,000 is needed for the clothing line item to uh, be able to provide uniforms for the new officers that are onboarding. 2000 is needed for the animal control department as the animal control officer is retiring. And so we are um, looking at hiring a new animal control officer that will need a new uniform also. And 19,500 is needed um, for the city manager department um, with the retirement of the city manager the um, new city manager coming in, ad additional funds may be needed in the city manager department. And resolution number 2209 transfers 24,000 from the airport contingency into the airport fund. And that is um, due to um, property taxes that were inadvertently left out of the budget at the beginning of the year. I do wanna just remind you that um, in our budget and any budget resolutions, if any money is not needed, that money flows to the ending fund balance, which is, is moved up to the beginning fund balance at the beginning of the year. And so it's always our goal to not <laughs> use all of our um, budgeted line items to full if we don't need those. And so those do flow over to the beginning fund balance for the next year. May I ask, beginning fund balance for the city, not the department? For, for the general fund. The general fund, thank you. Specifically what we're talking about this evening. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Any questions for Ms. Wilson? Um, just from the comments, nothing to do with the transfer, but uh, it just said the uh, animal control officers put his resignation in, but it was a retirement? He is, re he is retiring, yes. Okay, that's a whole different. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be uh, celebrating his retirement. At 1 p.m. on Friday? I forgot one to tell them the time. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, you have a new officer uh, that we'll be introducing as well, correct? Right. right. Thank you. Okay. You, Any other questions for Ms. Wilson? We have a motion. I can do it. Uh, Councilor Long? 
I move to adopt resolution number 22-009, authorizing transfers of budgeted amounts between categories of various funds of the City of the Dallas budget, making appropriations and authorizing expenditures for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. I'll second that. The move by Councillor Long and Councillor Richardson to approve the authorized transfers of budgeted amounts. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 11A is a discussion item. It's a discussion item regarding the draft stream corridor overlay code amendments. We have with us tonight. He no. formally introduced Don Hurt. A moment. You need just a second or maybe yeah. a minute. It's her laptop. Okay. So. I really like that screen. And I can see everyone looking at that one. That's really helpful for everyone to see. Mr. Mayor, can I ask, can you hear okay? It doesn't seem like from this angle, microphones don't seem to be projecting. Yeah, and I'm working really close to it to me. And when I listened to Darcy was working close to it, but it didn't seem like it was amplifying, but that's all there is. The speakers are located in such a way that they hear it out there. Okay. So it doesn't sound like it's amplifying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause we talked about that before all the remodeling that Sometimes it seemed like some were on and some were not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ready. Okay. So, Honorable Mayor and City Council, tonight I am going to be presenting a discussion item basically to bring you up to speed regarding some current uh, code amendment work that we're uh, trying to complete that is pertaining to the total maximum daily load, which was a document that you approved as an ancillary document to our comprehensive plan back in September, actually in November, excuse November, me. November, yeah. So I do, I have a slideshow to make it a little bit easier. We'll see if I can get this to go. My goodness, sorry guys, excuse me. Is that, yeah, I don't know. We did practice today, I promise. It just, for some reason, <laughs> I'm, I think I need to start it first. There we go, that's what I need to do. Apologies, technical oh. difficulties. There we go, start from beginning and, whoops. No, I didn't, I said that. Perfect, okay, here we go. Got it, okay, apologies. All right, so as I mentioned, this is for the total maximum daily limits or daily load is also what it's called, text amendment amendments. So as I mentioned in the staff report, September 16th, the Planning Commission recommended for adoption of this new implementation plan. And in November, the city council approved that plan. The adopted Im implementation plan includes existing management strategies that deal with education um, of riparian elevation of roads located along perennial streams, as well as restoration, river shading and or channel conditions. Uh, finally, the consideration of riparian protection ordinances, which is what we're going to be talking about today and low impact building practices. No mouse, this is, there we go, <laughs> sorry, oh, there we go. Okay, so municipal code implements regulates our stream corridor overlays. So those are located next to all three of our streams that are located in our urban growth boundary, which includes Chenoweth Creek, Mill Creek, and Three Mile Creek. The SC overlay zone complies with our safe harbor provisions that are uh, implemented by the Oregon administrative rules. 
and applies, as I stated, to all of our UGB and includes our corridors extending upland 50 feet from tops of banks. So each one of our streams that it goes 50 feet back. Uh, all new development needs to be located outside of this SC overlay. And the 50 foot setback is required for new development. There's, there's two ways that we have in our existing code that can allow for a reduction, which includes a stream corridor setback modification and then a hardship adjustment. So what we're looking to do is to propose these two exceptions to our municipal code by reducing these potential setbacks that are actually allowed in those areas. Just kind of give you a point of reference, Chenoweth Creek, so the blue line that you're seeing, that is approximately the stream corridor that runs down Chenoweth Creek. I just recently was working with Tycho of Wasco County GIS and he has updated this layer for us. So we will have a new updated layer, which was also part of our plan with DEQ. Uh, Mill Creek Stream Corridor gives you kind of an idea. It goes all the way out um, to our UGB and then drops into the Columbia River. And then the Three Mile Creek, which also extends just up uh, 197 uh, and our UGB and drops down to the Lone Pine as what's known as the Lone Pine Development. Gosh. Here we go. Okay. Sorry. Get that up one more time. Just real Go quick. Back. Whoops. Now I'm going forward. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Apologies. I don't know why they're not. Sorry, I asked. It's okay. No, you're fine. It's me. Oh my gosh. Don't panic. Oh yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. So would you like to look at each of the maps? So here's Chenoweth. Yeah, three mile. And three mile. Okay. Oh, and, and some, some of these you'll see, it appears that the creek is going through. A lot of that is un, underground, so we're not seeing that. And that sometimes is a little bit um, deceiving in terms of, you know, wait, there's not a creek there, but um, it actually does exist at, at some time of the year and is functioning. Thank you. You bet. See if I do it this time. There we go. Okay. So what I provided here was a copy of Article 10.5, our stream corridor overlay boundaries, just to kind of give you what, what our looks of our modifications would be. Um, uh, in this, I do have, you know, we'd be removing in two ways uh, and just basically state that however this map setback will be modified. We don't plan to do any modifications to the stream corridor delineation process because that is actually the determination process and not the um, reduction or modification process. So no changes to the first part. Okay, so this, this is a one of the first modifications. So we're looking to actually remove the stream corridor setback modification, which allows for the planning director to make the reduction of a stream corridor setback in a developed area. This was based upon conversations that we had with the department or uh, DLCD, which is Department of Land Conservation uh, or Land Conservation and Development. If we kept this in the process or in our code, what we would be required to do is an analysis, an environmental analysis. And their recommendation was that we remove this and bring it up to our safe harbor regulations that are uh, mandated by the state. So what we did is this will be removing that so that this will not be a modification that will be, be allowed any longer. The next proposed update would be number two. Uh, this again is the modification and what our uh, TMDL report stated is that we'd be reducing this hardship adjustment of 67%, um, which currently is allowed at 33.5 feet, reducing that down to 40%, which would only allow for 20 feet of 20 feet into that development. And again, these are modifications that have to follow certain um, requirements in order to, to get that approval. And this is the, uh, the, the last amendment that we're looking to do. So we're looking to amend the section which allows for 3000 square feet of impervious surface area within the 50 foot stream. We actually are looking to reduce that down to 500 square feet of hard surface area within that 50 foot setback. 
Okay. The, the next steps we have is uh, in March, which is this month, we're just finishing. Um, I have submitted the formal land use application and zoning ordinance amendment. We've started the process. Notice has been sent to the Department of Land Conservation and Development, as well as Wasco County. I did receive a comment from Planning Director Kelly Housley, House, Housley Glover, and uh, she's going to be working with me, has a couple of questions regarding the environmental impact statement or study, um, which we are not required to provide. Uh, she said that she will comment when we get to the public hearing process. In April, we will be sending out notifications of our legislative public hearings before the Planning Commission and City Council. Those will be published in our local newspaper, again, with legislative hearings. We do not have to notify property owners because it's dealing with a code re regulation rather than a land use decision on an individual parcel. April 12th, we are planning to have the first public hearing, which will be before the Planning Commission. Uh, if we do get through that meeting, the recommendation will then be delivered to City Council, and we're anticipating that to be May 9th for the City Council public hearing. And do you have any questions of staff? Any questions for Don? Councilor Richardson? Just one, thank you. Good evening, Don. You mentioned this uh, update or change complies with the safe harbor provision in Oregon statute. What is that? What's the safe harbor provision? So safe harbors, what, what the safe harbors are intended to do is in terms of uh, providing uh, the streams and corridors to actually have for like fish bearing streams to ensure that we're not going in terms of temperature, in terms of ensuring that development isn't going to be or encroaching into those streams that are fish bearing just it's a kind of a safety net a safe harbors so basically it's ensuring that we are doing everything that we can to ensure that those streams will continue to thrive and be fish bearing streams any other questions so um just one um the repair and restoration plan it, it moved the the um allows for a 50 foot stream setback under the new rules, which are provided by the state, I get that. But before it was 25, goes back to 50, but it can be, it can go back to 25 with the proper plan submitted. Correct, and that, uh, actually, let me go ahead and show you that because I think I did not include that in the packet. And when I was going through everything, that's the great thing about doing a slideshow, you actually can um, go back and go, oh wait, we didn't get that. It's just a real important thing to the farmers and ranchers out there that have. Absolutely. I mean, and a lot of this does it impact or potentially the mo more impact is going to be some of these residential properties that are along the streams in terms of development. We don't have too many farms, but yes, there, there could be the occasional farm. Uh, when we removed the section uh, regarding the applicant, so 2B, the applicant submits a stream corridor restoration plan. So what we did in our code before it referred back to a section that we're completely removing. So I then added this in here, and that does include stream restoration plan prepared by a wetland scientist. So there's all of these certain regulations. Um, they need to ensure the removal of invasive plants and species are replaced with suitable native plants. Uh, plan shall include provisions of monitoring and replacement of plants within a three-year period. And then it also states the Planning Commission may require a repairing conservation easement for the re remaining protected stream corridor. So, so although it could go back to 25 feet, it does not appear to be an easy process. It does. You do, there are a couple extra hoops that would definitely, yeah, some yeah. That's protections that are put there. So yeah, you bet. Uh, any other questions? So this is a discussion item. If there's yeah. no other questions, um, what's the plan from here? You're gonna bring it back? We will bring it back. So then the next step will be going to the Planning Commission and then hopefully we'll be coming with a recommendation for some of these uh, changes to occur. Okay, thank you very much. That. Next on the agenda is another discussion item. It's a discussion of the updates to goal nine policies and commercial industrial buildable lands analysis. Ms. Hurt. Hello, thank you. Oops, okay. So I do. It just said, okay. So thank you, Honorable Mayor and City
Hi, excuse me. Can, can you all hear me? I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, sorry, Don, it's Jonathan. I can't hear anybody. And I don't know if that's uh, technical difficulties on my end or if the stream is not broadcasting audio. Um, I can't hear anything. And so it sort of just happened in the middle of Don's speak, speaking. I just confirmed on the YouTube video that there's no audio either. Sorry for inter interruption. It looks like the uh, City of the Dow's account is muted. Um, the main one that shows all the counselors. designate adequate employment sites. You're and back. The plan must also include policies to provide necessary public facilities and transportation facilities. Uh, additionally, implementation policies and measures are designation of lands for industrial and commercial uses. Cities must adopt measures to implement these policies adopted pursuant to an OAR, include Im amendments to plan zone map designations, land use code, public facility plans and transportation, and plants must identify the approximate number of acreage and characteristics of sites needed to accommodate this industrial employment uses uh, to implement these policies. So to give you just a little bit of history, I did provide it in the staff report, but back in October, 2020, Angela Planning Group, also known as APG, completed the methodology and updated our results of our 2020 employment buildable lands inventory. November 19th, the Planning Commission recommended that the City Council adopt the EOA and buildable lands inventory, and it came to City Council on February 8th of 2021. City Council discussion on options and staff's ability to complete uh, those amendments. And then in April 12th of 21, City Council unanimously agreed with the Planning Commission's recommendation, which was to adopt these and bring these back at a later date. I believe Councillor Runyon was one of the ones that had suggested that. So we are here. Employment Buildable Lands Inventory includes the comprehensive plan, volume, background documents. So in terms of what needs to be updated and added, those are the three items that do need to be updated and added in terms of goal nine economic development. So this will be the goal that will be updated reflecting details that are included in the EOA and the Buildable Lands Inventory. So I just kind of did a short cut cut you know of what we're going to be adding changing and modifying um, these will be coming to you when we bring it before for a hearing with strike through and so that's easy for you to see I just kind of tried to make it a little easier today I do have a little bit more so uh, in talking with Angela Planning Group Matt Hasty will probably be helping present when it comes to the public hearing portions so um, he had suggested that I really focus today on our goal nine policies and look at what we're updating and adding so that the council is able to see what, what we've actually done and what the work um, that has been completed will be uh, generating. So I, I did provide the strike through as well as, or the underline and highlight. Um, and if you want me to, I can go through some of those, or if you want me just to kind of screen through, we, I can give you guys 
uh, or the council the pages that these are located on if you want to follow through if anybody had any specific comments or here's a question i always ask if you were me which one of those would you like to have discussed a little more oh Ooh. Ooh. well I, I i think what i would is going to really go to the last few pages in your packet that show the economic development action plan and we have the original plans that were created by, uh, oh my gosh, I just drew a blank, uh, Johnson Economics and then Angela Planning Group. We had a couple study sessions and you know discussions with the community. The last page is what Angela Planning had brought and what community conversations had had brought to the table. So with that, that's where I would I would jump in. Which a lot of those comments would. Um, I guess one of the big ones is going to be support growth of businesses that create destinations and experiences for residents of the Dells and visitors. And when we had a little bit of an example of that earlier with Scott uh, Stevenson giving his report. Um, they also, you know, number four that's on here, actively supporting redevelopment uh, efforts for underutilized commercial and industrial areas in our urban growth boundary. Um, that's available on our website or another website. Work in the public. Take a look at in the packet. So we do have these all in the packet. Uh, and I think we, I'm not, I'm, do we have that? Did we put that on our page also with our, when we adopted? I'm not sure. I can verify that if not. Just, so they go to the city council packet on the, on the city website and it's all there. They are all there. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if uh, the new website is going to be amazing when, when it gets up and running. Oh, really nice. So we will we'll make sure that that's a feature that we, we add that in. Um, goal nine, uh, additional policies that we have here. Um, one, one of the ones that they did, and you'll see some of these notes that are you know, throughout like number 10 and number 20, um, encourage the continued development of Columbia Medical Center. So there were some keywords that were just added in. A lot of those were from the public outreach meetings. Number 20, plan for and implement appealing lands or streetscapes that encourage personal interaction, accommodate public gatherings. So just some keywords that were thrown in there to just add a little bit more um, girth to, to the goals. Uh, so we do have quite a few here in 22 to 27. Uh, this is, these, some of these are really dealing with uh, some of the feedback that we received in, in terms of pursuing development of higher employment densities in areas planned or existing facility utilities and transportation infrastructure. Um, this is one that's come up, I think, since the day I walked into uh, my job here at the city, establish streamlined permitting processes that allows for business expansions and modifications without undergoing the same level, same level of review as new development. So it's kind of allowing a little bit of a, um, a benefit to those that are existing. Uh, ensuring the Dells has services and amenities necessary to attract workers and provide the services they need, such as medical services, child care, educational training opportunities. That was one that I think we heard also pretty loud and clear at the visioning uh, exercise that we just had. I think, I think we all heard that in our breakout groups. And, and this is one I think that this is it's always a little bit painful, but um, it's something as a community learning to deal with infill is learning to support and encourage infill and redevelopment, especially in commercial areas, um, as a way of, for to use land and infrastructure more efficiently. I think many cities uh, struggle with, with, with that. Uh, the last one here of. Uh, uh, continued development. Oh, wait, is that the same one? Maybe not. It is, isn't it? I did go back. Oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, so in addition to the goal, the new goal nines that we have or the modified goal nine, uh, we have implementation measures that are added. And so all of these, as you can see, are new, expanded existing industry base. Uh, and again, collaborating with MCED and other stakeholders to coordinate activities, encouraging organizations to bring barriers or to determine barriers to address the city and foster collaboration. Um, a lot of these keywords, collaboration and working together, very, I think it's very important and it's a pretty prominent across the state in terms of planning departments, trying to encourage um, you know, all these local agencies to work together for a common good. Uh, grow and attract talent. Uh, create place. I think that one is, you know, we've been hitting, hitting that on the altogether the Dows and some of the great projects that are going with the beautification committee. I've, 
um, enjoyed watching those. And I think this just kind of goes along with that as well as uh, Scott Baker's presentation here, you know, dealing with, you know, defining and promoting a vision for the Dalles, enhancing our appearance, appearance of our downtown, um, our bike trails, et cetera, et cetera. Oh dear, lost my mouse, oops, there we go. So the next steps that we will be bringing is, uh, and I've already completed, is submitting a formal land use application for the comprehensive plan amendments. Uh, I did complete the notice to DLCD and did receive uh, a comment from Wasco County Planning. They had no comments on it and said that it was within in lines with um, what our comprehensive plan should be doing. Uh, in April, notification of legislative public hearings before the Planning Commission and City Council will be published in our local newspaper. And April 12th will be the Planning Commission public hearing. If they, uh, their recommendation, hopefully we'll get a recommendation from that meeting that will then be brought to you for the May 9th City Council public hearing. So it'll be both of these will be going at the same meeting. If it's too much, you can let me know and we can adjust the dates for those public hearings. But that's all I had. Do you guys have any questions of staff? Any questions for Don? I've got, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hurt. Uh, this is just for my, I guess, background or, or information. On uh, page 26, you reference an upcoming West Side planning process. Can you just speak to that briefly? What is an upcoming West Side planning process? Page 26. That's not it's, on. Yeah. Sorry, it's 26 of the packet. It's oh, page one of the yes. uh, final draft mm. uh, in uh, memorandum. Oh, 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 okay. Exhibit A. Apologies. Yeah. There we go. Um, memo from okay. APG. below so, the four bullet points. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so there have, I have not been involved with, with the West Side project planning process. I know we did have a project planned for looking to find affordable housing and doing some development regarding more residential. I don't, was it commercial also, and Julie? Commercial, and it was, and uh, that was about, I'm gonna say three years, three years ago. ago. Yeah. And that there was some uh, funding allotted for a consultant, but that got shelved when COVID hit and it has not come back up. I think planning department has their hands full right now with what they're doing. And that was a less urgent project. Sure, to be to be looked at at some point. Mm -hmm. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. So it's still on our it's still, radar. It's radar. on the back burner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we did receive granting money. And I think the way that we let them know is you know, what obviously COVID did Yes. Yeah, we're, we're like, hey, we're a little overloaded. And I think that hopefully we'll have a favorable outcome again when we do apply for another grant. I have no doubt of it. It's time, right? Other questions? Uh, Don, at the bottom of the, your staff report, the very last line, staff's recommendation to the plan commission was to delay adoption of the BLI until data showed that's the, that the Dallas is deficient. What wasn't um, another consideration was to wait until after the, the uh, Gorge Commission ruled and passed its management plan? You, you know, I, I believe I, that sounds familiar. I was not able to find that in any minutes, but I, I was that was kind of my recollection also. And I okay. think Councilor Runyon had, was, was concerned about staff having adequate time to do the revisions ourselves. And, and it's like, I don't know, put on the point. Okay. <laughs> I thought that that had been discussed. Um, Which, yeah, I mean, it has been defined now, so. I, yeah. Okay, and on page two, in the middle, one, two, three, four, the fifth paragraph that starts with staff concluded, there's a little word in there that really threw me. It's the word new. Staff concluded that the new recommended option, that, that almost implies there was two, two they changed their, Right. So I thought that alluded to the November 
2020. Cor- correct. So what yeah. happened is staff had given a recommendation and the planning commission had modified the recommendation that we, they did not take the recommendation at staff. So right. then we modified it, you know, maybe me using new, I should have just probably said the recommendation by the planning commission. So basically it took our, our recommendation, made some tweaks to it. And then that was what was presented to the planning commission or to the city council. Oh, okay. So new did not imply us. It wasn't a second. No, it was no. Oh, okay. That was that was. They did not follow our original recommendation, okay. which yeah. happens. That's all I had. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions for Ms. Hurt? Exciting to get this done. That's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Oh, did did I just to clarify, were you or is the commission okay with keeping both of those public hearings for the meeting for one meeting? Or do you think that might I think our city clerk will look at all the other things that are placeholdered on that meeting and she's very good at adjusting accordingly. So she can work with you, okay. John. Perfect. The TMDL should be pretty quick, but mm-hmm. might be more discussion regarding the EOA and BLI. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 12 is adjournment, but before I adjourn, is there any other business to come before the city council? Okay, this meeting's hereby adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.